Well, let's go ahead and begin then. Uh, well, good evening and good morning, everyone. <laughs> uh, it was, uh, I took a break last time and uh, so get, good to be back. Uh, and we are, we want to finish the series on uh, spiritual discipline. So I had to discipline myself to remain with the, <laughs> with the subject. And so, as you would probably have noticed, uh, I put the topic that we will discuss today, and that is the discipline of guidance. <clears throat> but before we get into it, uh, let me see. Praveen, I think uh, it would be good for you to start in prayer. Yeah. Father in heaven, we come to thy presence, thanking you for everything you are doing in our lives, Lord. Thank you so very much for giving us another opportunity that we could gather together and to discuss on various spiritual matters, on uh, especially to discuss about you and your love and the disciplines of spiritual life. Or I pray your spirit guidance may be given to us and you open our hearts and minds that we may be able to receive and perceive your revelation. Speak to us through your servant, and the discussions we do, Lord, may be mutually benefiting, encouraging, and edifying. We submit this time to your hands, asking for asking you to take control and the lead <laughs> so that we all may be confirmed to the image of your son. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And uh, welcome again to our Wednesday evening Bible study. Uh, as I mentioned, today we are going to talk about uh, guidance. How do we seek guidance, uh, you know, from God? And that is the specific uh, focus that we will have today. And maybe we can turn the question around and also ask, how does God guide us? Uh, and we are all familiar with uh, the fact that we all seek God's guidance. And I think one of the most common medium we use for God's guidance is prayer. We pray and we ask God to uh, provide us a direction, uh, answer our prayers as we seek his uh, will in our life. And that is also a sense of guidance. We always pray thy will be done or, or we ask God, what is his will for us? So all of these aspects are, um, you know, a way of seeking guidance. Uh, I still remember talking about uh, seeking guidance, some of the difficulties we have faced. Uh, and one of it was our tax problem. Some of you will remember, Bertie and Sanjay Rao will remember our uh, very uh, difficult tax problem that we had some time back. And we committed ourselves to prayer, seeking God to guide us and to help us, certainly asking for his favor as we uh, negotiated with, uh, you know, the various officials, see, you know, also having to go right up till the high court uh, to work this problem out. And so uh, I, uh, definitely recognize, you know, the need for guidance and uh, we implore God for his guidance. And uh, like I said, we commit our, committed ourselves to, you know, extensive prayer for several years asking for God's guidance. So all of us want to be guided by God, isn't it? Uh, we face situations in life where sometimes we, we struggle to find answers to the various circumstances of life. And we need for God to uh, show us a way, light our path. And so let's talk about um, how we can, how God guides us and how we can seek that guidance. But before we do that, like I have been doing in this particular series, I welcome some thoughts from you just to set the stage uh, to help uh, me understand how you are thinking about this topic. Uh, so I want to ask, do you 
have you felt a sense of very strong guidance? And how have you felt? It? Uh, did you feel God's leading hand uh, in, 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 in guidance? And uh, how have you felt it? So, so maybe uh, my phone was ringing. I'm sorry, I um, needed to come back to you on that. But let me just open it up for some thoughts that you might you would like to share, you know? So go ahead. Who's going to be the first? <laughs> right. Yes, Bertie. Certainly, go ahead. And make sure you unmute yourself as you do that. Yes. Uh, I've, uh, I've, I've not uh, felt a strong feeling as such, uh, but I've definitely recognized God's guidance in small and big matters. Um, I've... Uh, uh, prayed about it and asked, surely looked to the Lord and uh, uh, trusted him. And uh, he did, uh, did guide, his guidance was uh, seen in the way things worked out. And I, I, do, I gave due thanks to him. Uh, but as you say, a strong sense of feeling, I don't know what you mean by that, but surely in heart I was knowing that it is God uh, uh, God, it was God. Uh, God definitely was in heard the prayer and definitely did something according to His will and the best uh, best solution for me. And okay. uh, I recognize His help and I gave due thanks to Him. Uh, yes, I like that the way you put it. You know, uh, I uh, when you said that the way things worked out was indicative of the fact that. God's guiding hand was there. So, uh, uh, yeah, but, you know, some, some people can, you know, when, when you ask the question, what are the strong sense of feeling? Uh, I, have, I have felt, you know, especially when I was talking to you about the tax problem, the way things worked out, uh, and I presume I can just uh, echo what you were saying to see how things worked out. And then, in retrospect, you see how God was involved to, uh, you know, nudge things in the direction that we wanted. So uh, that's, uh, I, I suppose, in ret retrospective, you can see that strong sense of guidance. Right? Anyone even, would like to share? Yes, go ahead, bud. Even the sense of favor. Yeah. Favor, and uh, God says, you know, in uh, Proverbs. Uh, Chapter 3, verse 2, I think, or verse 3. Uh, my son, uh, let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind it around your neck. Write it on the tablet of your heart. So you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. Uh, favor, God does give favor. You know, where you leave, you know, you, you have not expected that. Uh, maybe yeah. in the tax, uh, tax case itself, how right. he tried eventually and how, the, how uh, God brought, brought a close to the matter and gave us gave the order, you know, uh, from the high court favoring us and the matter was closed. It yes. was uh, definitely, it was, you know, you and I could not have worked out. I wouldn't say, uh, you know, the lawyer whom we had uh, appointed, the lawyer whom we engaged, uh, mm -hmm. did his bit of, you know, uh, by his, uh, by his, uh, what do you call that, expertise, so to speak, get, you know, help things to uh, be brought in our favor, or be brought uh, uh, brought to victory. No, I don't think so. It was uh, definitely even the wording of the uh, of the order, as if in retrospect, if you recall, was very favorable to us. Was you yes. know, so God could give favor and yes, good success. You could say yes, definitely. I echo what you say. Right. Uh, anybody else felt God's uh, guidance? Yes, Anil, go ahead. Yeah, I agree with uh, <clears throat> Bertie that uh, God has been guiding our lives and we have been, uh, you know, we clearly feel his hand in uh, many of the decisions that we have taken. But, uh, I, you know, it's not explicit like we heard God's voice in our <laughs> brain saying, yeah, this is right, do this or go this way or anything like that. But right. yet, as the results turned out, and I mean, there are, a umpty number of things where you know we just prayed, we left it to God, and things just happened. So yes, definitely God has been uh, guiding us. Yes, uh, 
Uh, it's interesting that you say that, you know, I mean, uh, uh, you know, some people would like to believe that God actually, you know, uh, audibly spoke and guided them. Yeah, yeah. Now, of course, we had that in the, in, in the first century church, or of course, certainly in the Old Testament. Uh, and I suppose some people will get a little confused as to why doesn't God speak today the way he did in the past. Uh, I'm not sure if I would be able to give you a, you know, a precise answer, but uh, definitely we are not left without his guidance today, like uh, both of you and Anil and Bertie have mentioned. How about the others? Any, uh, any example? Yeah. Pastor, I want to say something here. Yes, Pauline first and then Vincent uh, after that. Go ahead, Pauline. Okay, thank you. Um, Pastor, um, let, I want to bring it back right from Sunday school when we were as children. So, you know, we are so, uh, at that young age, we are impressionable. So by the Sunday school teachers, you know, like uh, used to meet um, neighbors also going to the same church, you know, feel very sad on a good Friday. So, you know, we had the belief and guidance. So there the Sunday school guided us, right? And then uh, maybe a little too hectic when we I came into college life, let's say. Uh, though we did go. So uh, what I see, uh, you know, today when I even retrospect that the best guidance, because I have done it personally, is the Bible. And sometimes whenever we go to whatever church, you know, irrespective of denomination, I keep going to the Catholic too for the message because my late husband was. So the messages which I get through the priest and the pastors, then of course, not to forget the main thing, the Bible itself, when I personally, like when I'm in the four walls at home, I'm a little confounded. I, uh, you know, retrospect. Of course, now I, I will not be able to quote the verses, but on and off, uh, maybe Matthews, if I'm not right. Like when I wanted to, you know, I was of the conservative type. I'm going to go to a call center, do a night shift. So I did refer the Bible. So on and off. And very in the recent past, this year, 2021, I didn't know what to do. Then I said a prayer because I, I strongly felt that God will guide. I even spoke to you, I think, Pastor, whether am I doing right? Rather than getting a job, I had a job. So I always felt that guidance is there in my heart, in a voice, like, you know, Pauline, leave it, do what, what, what my conscience says. So, and then uh, I prayed and uh, let it uh, lead. And uh, so because of the belief that, yes, God will uh, guide me. And uh, sometimes I talk to one of us, maybe Joshila, you, Franklin. So I see the guidance coming, you know, via that way also. Okay. So uh, today, spiritually, as a person, is all because of these, you know, different means of uh, guidance. Okay. Well, uh, yes, thank you for mentioning that. I think. God is not limited to one medium of uh, guide, the way to guide us, but he guides us in various ways. Uh, Vincent, uh, you had a comment. Go ahead. Yeah. God spoke to me in a very loud voice. Okay. That was in 1997, May. End of May. Now, uh, Anil and Rekha will know about uh, Delhi May. It's full of storms and squalls. Mm. I was on my scooter coming from coming back home from Noida and we were staying in Mahipalpur those days. So it was around about 8 o'clock in the night and uh, there was a very, very strong squall. Mm. I couldn't drive because that road from uh, Noida turning till Kalindi Kunj, it's a straight road, crosses the river, and there's hardly any trees over there. And I had to stop somewhere. Street lights were not working because of the squall. I think some lines may have been down, and it was raining terribly. I stopped my scooter somewhere near a culvert over there. And then 
a loud voice spoke to me move your scooter away from here move it to the edge of the road i immediately moved it to the edge of the road maybe i had shifted the thing i dragged it about 5 feet or 6 feet to the edge of the road but though it was slushy you know that it was road was all flooded and uh, cars were passing by i could see only through the light of the cars and intermittently lightning it was so dark and the wind was so strong i was getting a bit nervous and scared then suddenly i heard a big noise coming from the other side of the road there was a big hoarding over there oh okay those were tin sheet hoardings in the dark i couldn't see it but when the lightning struck i could see it i hunkered down behind my scooter holding on to the handle bar mm. and the rear of the seat the bar behind the seat and I was like squatting on the road and holding on to the scooter big noise startled me because the hoarding started rattling and shaking and the wind was howling literally howling i was scared it might crash it did crash the thing is when it crashed the top frame of the hoarding hit the scooter and removed the rear view mirror i realized i lost my mirror only when i was pushing it because i couldn't even start it okay yeah now the thing is i tried to rationalize it to move the scooter to allow cars to pass easily but the thing is the voice spoke if i had not obeyed i would have been dead <laughs> because the hoarding would have come upon me it took me i think two and a half hours from that time to reach home because the brakes weren't working because the mud had gone into it mm-hmm. and i a kilometer from there I, from the place where i was stuck i pushed it towards the barrage there was a police point over there checkpoint and i was very fortunate that the policeman over there had a fire going on and he was helping all the scooterists who were facing problems with the scooter so i reached out to him and i said please help me with this so he said okay you open up the side of the engine side of the scooter and he took his big piece of cloth and he warmed it on the on the fire which he had <laughs> and then when it was dried up he put it on the engine it it sucked up all the mo- moisture from there and he said okay give it a kick i started the thing it started then i could move <clears throat> later i found out i couldn't even stop because the brakes were not working because of the mud i had to drive so slowly it took me two and a half hours to reach home but the thing is that night god spoke okay <laughs> if he had not spoken i wouldn't be here thanks well, thank you yeah thanks thank god. you thank you vincent for sharing that i uh, i don't remember you ever mentioning this even though i've known you for several years uh, but yes i think you probably are one of the favored ones to be uh, to hear the audible voice and of course god can certainly you know do it when it is necessary thank you for sharing that with us and i'm glad that you uh, were safe <laughs> right anyone else uh, uh, otherwise let me share with you what you know some thoughts and then we can all we can come back and uh, discuss some more all right so let me just go ahead and then share with you what uh, i would like to 
what I have been able to find with regards to uh, spiritual guidance. And I can also attest to the fact that I've had some, you know, some personal experiences. But let me begin by saying that there are obviously from the scriptures, and I'm going to read a lot of scriptures today. Uh, there are two types of guidance that we can receive. Uh, the scriptures attests to that. And I think God wants us to be comforted as well as be confident that he will guide us. One is individual guidance. You know, we see in the Bible how God guides individuals. Uh, and there is also corporate guidance where God guides an entire congregation or a group of people. You know, uh, when it comes to individual, I read uh, what the apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, you remember he would prayed for, uh, you know, uh, to, uh, uh, to be healed of a particular problem. And he says in 2 Corinthians 12 verse 8, three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, verse 9, my grace is sufficient for you. Very uh, famous scripture that we uh, quote many a times. And he goes on to say, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Here is a guidance that God gives to the apostle on an individual basis, where he speaks to him and he says, uh, my grace is sufficient. So I'm sure on many occasions, like we have heard Vincent, uh, there has been guidance that we have received on an individual basis. But there is also corporate guidance where, uh, or, well, the entire nation of Israel or, uh, you know, a, a congregation uh, has been guided by God. I read from Acts chapter 13, if you remember that uh, situation. Uh, verse 2, it says, while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, uh, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. So here we see a group of people praying and seeking God's guidance. And there was a special guidance provided for them. So uh, we can be encouraged to seek God's personal guidance. And as a group, as a denomination, as a congregation, we can seek God's guidance. And the Bible does confirm that we must seek God's guidance. In other words, it is something that we are encouraged to do. Uh, we are asked to come for guidance. You know, maybe I should say every Christian must intentionally seek God, God's guidance. That's the reason why it is called a spiritual discipline. It's a discipline we must submit to. Uh, we must uh, uh, instill this discipline deliberately and perhaps on a daily basis, we seek his guidance. And uh, in, the, you know, in that respect, you know, every time I prepare a message, uh, a sermon, a Bible study, I pause for a moment and say, God, just guide me, just lead me. And I ask the Holy Spirit for his leading. And uh, I can say that on many occasions, uh, you know, I wouldn't have been able to deliver a message in the way I did it. And sometimes even apart from my notes, uh, I have received, you know, a certain sense of prompting of the Holy Spirit to guide me, to say certain things, to use certain examples or phrases uh, to bring inspiration to God's people. In the book of Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him. And he will make your paths straight. I'm presuming this is a very clear uh, verse, a statement, where we are encouraged to seek God's guidance. All right. So in that respect, uh, you know, we are invited to do it. And hence, we instill it as a spiritual discipline. So now let's come to the all important uh, aspect of how does God provide guidance today? And what I'm going to say is not, uh, you know, exhaustive. 
Obviously, God is not limited to any of these. He can guide us in any way, form or fashion, uh, like speaking audibly, as Vincent has testified. Uh, but uh, today, we can be certain that there is uh, uh, very clear ways God gives his guidance. Number one is scripture. And I think it was Pauline who mentioned that she has received guidance when we read scripture. The, 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 the Bible uh, is definitely written in a way, in a manner where we can sometimes hear God, not maybe not audibly, but we can definitely attest to the fact that God is guiding us. Uh, and the all famous scripture there is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, where it says all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness. Notice verse 17, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. The scripture is saying, or rather this, the apostle is saying here, to Timothy, that scripture helps us, guides us, teaches us, rebukes us, corrects us, trains us, right? And uh, so that we may be equipped, we may be helped, we may be uh, given the guidance we need. So very clearly, scripture is one very powerful medium that God uses to guide us. Perhaps a question we can ask for ourselves is, do we read scripture? <laughs> Many Christians sometimes uh, are not very uh, well acquainted with scripture. Uh, and I think that is uh, unfortunately to their own, uh, uh, you know, disadvantage. If you don't read scripture, then of course, uh, you don't get the wisdom for the guidance that we need to live our lives. Now, that doesn't mean to say that I am uh, asking that, you know, we do it in a very legalistic manner. Uh, I'm not saying that. But uh, we must recognize that there is wisdom in the scriptures that we can apply in our lives. We can use for guidance. All right. So that is one uh, way God guides us today. Secondly, the Holy Spirit. You know, the ministry of the Holy Spirit today is a deliberate ministry. Jesus Christ said that the Holy Spirit will come. Another comforter will come. And guide us into all truth. Isn't that what he says? Let me read you uh, John 16 verse 13. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. And if that is a promise that Jesus lives, uh, gives to us, then how important it is for us to seek that guidance. Where God, or, or rather the God, the Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth. And uh, to, to say something that you all are very familiar with. Our own, uh, what do you say, uh, denomination, which, we, which was called WCG in the past, Worldwide Church of God. Uh, it was many uh, leading theologians and Christians have attested to the fact that what happened in our denomination, the reformation that took place, is a leading of the Holy Spirit. Right. And I still remember for us in here in India, you remember, uh, you know, I'm sure Bertie will remember and Mr. Rao, uh, Vincent will remember, Anil, you know, uh, we struggled with the Sabbath command uh, when we observed the seventh day Sabbath. So many of us lost jobs. I know Bertie lost his, uh, you know, very plus job in Air India. Uh, I had lost writing exams. Uh, because we were told not to write exams on the Sabbath. Uh, I still remember <laughs> that I had to turn down a very prestigious offer that I had received uh, for representing my university here in Hyderabad, the Osmania University, to do a nationwide debate. I was invited to Delhi uh, to because I had won the, the first few rounds and I was chosen to represent the university to go to Delhi and, and participate in the, in the national debate. But I turned it down because it was on a Sabbath. And so, uh, you know, many of us can attest to that. But we prayed. We continue to pray. 
And God guided us and helped us finally, of course, leading us into the Reformation. So anyway, uh, the Holy Spirit guides us. Let me give you, uh, you know, I mean, uh, uh, let me also say that the Holy Spirit guides us by prompting us, by inspiring us, by planting thoughts in our minds. And I can attest to that from the podium as I speak. On many occasions, I have received, you know, a prompting to say something which I wouldn't have said otherwise. And, and sometimes later you wonder, why did I say that? You know, how did, how did that thought come to my mind? And uh, we can certainly, from a Christian perspective, say the Holy Spirit continues to guide us and lead us. Uh, let me give you a third point uh, or a third way God guides us. And that is counsel, personal counsel, right? Uh, we know that God himself is a counselor. Isn't he called the wonderful counselor? And then he inspires in people in the church to be counselors, to teach. And I had the privilege of uh, doing a course in Christian counseling. Uh, I have a certificate course where I have used that to help people. And on many occasions, people have been helped. And I believe it was God helping them or maybe using me as a medium to, to guide people. Uh, once again, using the book of Proverbs in chapter 15 and verse 22, it says, plans fail when there is no counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. So here is the scripture attesting to the fact that counsel, the seeking counsel is uh, a viable or a, 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 a scriptural way to seek God's guidance. And I think one of you also mentioned that. But you know, sometimes in a culture like ours, sometimes we are shy of seeking counsel. We feel like a failure when we go for counsel. Or some, sometimes some people discourage us from seeking counsel, right? And I heard one pastor's wife say that only mad people seek counsel. <laughs> you know, what a, what a sad testimony it is for a pastor's wife to say that. Uh, but the Bible itself, you know, uh, encourages us to seek counsel and God can provide counsel through other people, right? Moses, the great prophet himself, sought counsel or rather listened to counsel of his father-in-law when he was told, you know, to train people to uh, look after the welfare of the others. Let me go to the fourth point then. Uh, a fourth way God gives us guidance is through reason. The fact that he's blessed us with a mind that can reason. May I say common sense. <laughs> you know, God blesses us with common sense so that we may, uh, you know, uh, be in a position to receive a guidance from God. He can inspire our mind. He can give us wisdom, as the Apostle James tells us, to pray for wisdom. So he can use our common sense to give us guidance. Let me read you a scripture from 2 Timothy chapter 1. I'm reading in verse 7. It says, learn to be shrewd, you who are inexperienced. Develop common sense. <laughs> That's the exact word this translation uses. You who are foolish. I'm sorry, this is Proverbs 8 verse 5. Uh, I'll come to the Timothy verse a little later. Uh, this, I, I just read you the verse from Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 5. But very clearly it says, learn to be shrewd. And how can you be shrewd? Uh, develop common sense. You know, in other words, depend on your common sense. Use your reason. Uh, don't suspend reason. And sometimes... Uh, you know, yes, there is a time when we move in faith. And uh, even though we go in faith and we might not be able to, uh, you know, exactly see what's ahead of us. But faith doesn't necessarily suspend common sense. Uh, you know, uh, so common sense is, conf is, is definitely encouraged by God to be used. Notice what uh, Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. He says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but one of power, love, and sound judgment. 
I like that, uh, those phrase, that phrase, sound judgment. So God blesses us with sound judgment or common sense or good reason so that we may be able to negotiate the various issues of life. So that's another way God guides us. And let me give you one more. And like I said, this is not limited to this. But the more common ways God leads us. And uh, the fifth point is circumstances in life. Circumstances of life. Right? Sometimes we are made to face certain situations. And we might not understand why. We might not be able to figure out why am I in this situation? But uh, like we were saying earlier, in retrospect, we begin to understand God was using that circumstance to help us, to guide us, maybe to give us more wisdom. Right? And in this respect, I can, uh, 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 you know, we can go back to that very uh, famous verse in Romans 8, verse 28. Notice what he says. We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. Uh, notice all things. Could that include circumstances of life? Could it include various situations that we might face and we don't understand? Well, God can work it out in even in those circumstances for the good of us, perhaps giving us the, the, the sense of guidance we need. The famous uh, uh, you know, situation that Joseph was in, if you remember, uh, Joseph was sold off into slavery and then uh, he was thrown into prison. And many a times, uh, I'm sure he probably wondered, why am I in this situation? But when he finally reconciles with his family, with all his brothers, a very interesting verse in Genesis chapter 50 and verse 20. Joseph then begins to understand how God was using any, every one of those circumstances to bring him to where he was so that he would be a uh, help to his family. Let me read you verse 20 in Genesis 50. It says, you intended to harm me, talking about how the brothers sold it, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So these are various ways God can use, can guide us uh, through our circumstances uh, in life. Okay, having said that, I just want to now conclude by giving you two more thoughts. Uh, one is actually a word of caution. Even as we look at scripture for guidance, even as we depend on the Holy Spirit to lead us into all truth, and even as we take counsel from others, from godly people and you know, good counselors, uh, even as many a times we can use reason and our common sense and also the circumstance of life to guide us. There is a word of caution in the scriptures. And I want to read you from 1 John, the epistle of John, uh, chapter 4 and verse 1, where it says, uh, dear friends, this is uh, the first epistle of John, chapter 4, verse 1, dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. So here is a word of caution, which is very relevant for us even today, as it was in the time of John, that there are deceiving spirits. There, there can be, you know, uh, 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 you know, a certain direction that we may be pointed to, which could be wrong. And so, uh, uh, John says, test the spirits to see whether they are from God, right? In other words, are you receiving guidance from God or are you receiving guidance which is faulty, which is maybe from a false prophet, from somebody who is not of God? And uh, if we go on to read, we, can, we, we have two criterias by which we can determine whether this guidance is from God. Uh, let me read you verse 2 and uh, notice what is the first criterion. Here the uh, apostle says, this is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. 
But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of Antichrist, it says, which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. Now, just to give you some context there, uh, you know, uh, at that point in time, perhaps there was a very strong Gnostic influence. You know, the, the Gnostics were those who specifically said that Jesus didn't come in the flesh, that he only apparently came in the flesh. And so they denied the incarnation. And so they... Uh, John was basically countering the Gnostic influence. And uh, he was definitely trying to uh, counter those who were trying to deny Jesus coming in the flesh. Well, today, I'm sure there are denominations, so-called Christian groups, who actually deny that Jesus came in the flesh, that he was not 100% human. But that is a very important doctrine of the Christian church today, that he was 100% human and 100% uh, uh, divine. And so uh, uh, John gives us a criteria. If there is someone who's giving you this kind of a, uh, advice or people who are giving this kind of advice who believe in these kind of things, then obviously uh, we are cautioned not to believe them. A second criteria I read from verse six of the same chapter chapter 4, uh, uh, John says, we are from God, and whoever knows God listens to us, but whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we may recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. In other words, he's saying that many will come and say, well, you know, this is the truth. This is what God said, but uh, how do we, how do we distinguish them? How do we distinguish between those who are speaking for God and for those who are not speaking from God? And here I would like to bring in uh, a verse from the book of Isaiah chapter 8 and uh, uh, something very similar taking place here. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 19 says, when someone tells you to consult mediums and spiritists who whisper and mutter, should not a people inquire of their God? All right. So we are clearly being said, uh, pointed to God. But how does God guide us? And here Isaiah says, why consult the dead on behalf of the living? Consult God's instruction and the testimony of warning. If anyone does not speak according to this word, they have no light of dawn. Once again, Isaiah is pointing to the scriptures, right? And perhaps this is a double reiteration for us to know that the scriptures are very important. The Bible is very important. And of course, the right interpretation of the scriptures. And that's why John says, uh, you know, whoever, uh, whoever is not from God does not listen to us. And John is obviously qualified to interpret scriptures correctly. Okay, so that, that is one thought I wanted to leave you with, the word of caution. But there is one more final thought, and we'll open it up for some discussion. Uh, one final thought with regards to seeking God's guidance, and here is another, perhaps you could say, another criteria. And I, I again appeal to uh, the Apostle John in his first episode. And here in verse 7, chapter 4 and verse 7, he says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Verse 8, whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. What is my point here? My point is this. Any guidance that you will receive that goes against love, that goes against the love of God is not from God, right? Any guidance that you might receive that goes against love, goes against God because God is love. All right, so I'm going to leave it there. Uh, we have a few minutes to uh, bring in some thoughts, comments, any questions that you might have. So the floor is open. Please go ahead.
right. Anything you'd like to add to what I've said? Yes, Bertie, go ahead. Uh, in our world, or uh, from the time our, our first parents who were deceived and uh, fell into and sort of uh, and subsequently uh, disbelieved and disobeyed God and the world that has come, God knowing it, and uh, he had a plan of redemption already prepared for us, and now we are the redeemed of the Lord. But why do people, you know, sort of, why is the world gone lock, stock, and barrel in deception? Lock, stock, and barrel in false religion, and God calls it the gods of the people. And, uh, you know, uh, is, uh, you know, you mentioned about uh, seeking God's guidance and God working in ways and means to draw people he has various ways we cannot limit god but somehow i find you know the the uh, it's a uh, worldwide it's uh, you know it's uh, yeah almost uh, god calls it the world is in darkness you know the god of this world right. why, why do people sort of god permits lock stock and barrel you know people going into deception or people not knowing the true god uh, sometimes i wonder that you know okay Yes, once again, uh, you asked a question which, uh, which is very difficult to answer. Uh, but I am not sure if, Bertie, if you're alluding to the fact that uh, if God is giving us guidance, are you alluding to the fact that God has failed to stop deception? Is that what you're saying? No, no, it's not that, Mr. Zakari. It's, it's, the, it's you know, even coming to, uh, if it hadn't been a miracle, and I was a Catholic, Roman Catholic myself, yeah. until 21, 20, if it wasn't a miracle from God uh, who brought me out of it, I still would have been a, a Roman right. Catholic, not knowing the true God. But uh, yeah. what, a, uh, what, a, uh, what a blessing it is, and uh, how thankful to God that he, uh, his yes. calling uh, brought me into the light. You know? Right, yeah, I understand. I, I, I don't mean that you... Uh, you know, uh, you are saying that God has failed. Obviously, you're not saying that. But some, it, 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 some may feel that, you know, or, or some do feel that, you know, the God has failed. Or you could, or some even say there is no God. That's why there is so much of deception. But, you know, uh, even though I will not be able to fully answer your question, I can only say one thing, which something that uh, uh, was shared in our class. Uh, we are going through the book of Ephesians. And Dr. Gary Dedo said, you know, that there is nothing in this world that has taken place that God cannot redeem. Right? And I thought that's a very important statement. And maybe I'll repeat that. There is nothing that takes place in this world that God cannot redeem. So in other words, even though there is so much of deception, God has the power he, uh, I mean to say, he's not limited or that does not limit him from redeeming the world. But of course, we know that he, uh, what do you say, uh, he uh, respects the choice, the free choice and the free will of people. And people uh, have to decide. And if they choose to remain in deception and in darkness, unfortunately, uh, then, you know, uh, it is upon their head, you know, so to say. I don't know if that helps, but anybody else would like to uh, add to that? Yes, Anil, go ahead, and then Bert. You know, uh, as Bertie said, that everything is turning topsy-turvy all over the world, and particularly in this country, ever since, you know, uh, the past gentleman, he has vitiated the atmosphere so much and it's very surprising that one particular party in this country is made a total 180 degrees turnabout. I mean, whatever is false, whatever is fraudulent, whatever is uh, are lies, they're trying to promote as, as uh, the truth and, and the right thing, which is yeah. very, very surprising in, right. in light of uh, so much uh, evidence and so much facts, uh, they still don't bother. So this can be very, very frustrating. And you, you really feel that oh, what's happening? Why is God not addressing this? Mm -hmm. But I think uh, 
I sort of rationalize it or think about it that, uh, you know, ultimately God is in charge. If we believe in a almighty God, he's all powerful. He can do anything and he can set right at any minute. But he's allowing this obviously for a purpose. And that is his purpose. He's, he's guiding this to a purpose and he is in charge. So as long as we, you know, keep our focus on him and think that, okay, he is working out his purpose, that's fine. Let's depend on him. And instead we get frustrated and angry and all those things, then it becomes a problem. So that's what uh, I'd like to say. That's what has uh, sort of sustained uh, me particularly because I get very, very upset and very angry. But then uh, this, I, this thought comes to my mind and then, uh, you know, that sort of calms it down. So basically God is in charge, period. Just trust him and see where it goes. Certainly, yes, yes, very true. And of course, what you said is something that is taking place uh, in, in many parts of the world. Yeah, uh, yes. yes, and uh, people passing off a lies as true. Bertie, you had a thought. Uh, uh, God mentions in his word that these government, governments, uh, governmental authority, you know, uh, leaders are deputies, right? He said they are deputies now, please, in the world. And... Uh, uh, you know they are for the they are for the right, and not uh, and they will reward the, commend the good, and uh, punish the evil doer. But uh, these these same deputies uh, or that those in authority, we hear corruption. We hear they are corrupt, and we hear they are you know uh, you know uh, not uh, ruling justly or insincere or taking bribes or you know sort of. Uh, you know, they're not doing the right thing. Uh, so I was just wondering if, uh, uh, about this, if you could just touch that point. Uh, I, I presume you are referring to the scripture in Romans where God says that no authority is, you know, uh, yes. is, is without God's sanction or, you know, all authority is uh, ordained of him. Yeah. Uh, uh, but of course, uh, like Anil said, you know, there is a certain allowance that God gives. And then these leaders, unfortunately, may not uh, follow the, the, the con their conscience, perhaps sometimes. Uh, they, are they are misled sometimes. And so, yes, there is a lot of uh, upheaval because of that. Uh, but once again, I suppose we can just trust in the fact that God will finally bring redemption in all of these uh, circumstances. Yes, uh, we got another five minutes. Uh, feel free. Yes, Anil, uh, Rekha, go ahead. Yes. Yes, I was thinking in the scripture somewhere it says that the sins of the Amorites are not yet full, and therefore I'm not acting, I'm, you know, I'm not doing anything about it. So unless the whole thing, the everything is completely uh, according to God's plan, the sins are complete, then only will he act. That's what I probably said. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But you sometimes wonder, you know, if uh, hasn't there been enough sin in this world? You know? I know, it's, it's overflowing. <laughs> it's overflowing. But yes, uh, uh, you know, as uh, I think the book of Acts talks about in the appointed time that right. God knows, uh, you know, uh, God has his ways of, uh, you know, bringing in the kind of justice that is required. Uh, so, yes, I suppose we just have to learn to wait. And even as I say that, you know, in uh, VS, we see a lot of uh, upheaval, a lot of, sin, you know, sinning, uh, uh, sinful situations in the world. But on the other hand, uh, let us not lose hope of the fact that there are many who are bowing their knees to Jesus Christ, you know, and there are many, uh, especially in countries where they can't be open. They are called crypto Christians, you know, who have yeah. their Jesus. And who knows that how many of them will be that large, you know, multitude of people who have given their allegiance to Jesus, but cannot say it openly because of the circumstances they are in. So that is hopefully, you know, something that we can, uh, uh, we can take uh, heart for, you know, for. Any other thoughts on guidance, seeking God's guidance? 
But do you have something else to say? Yeah, another uh, very interesting thing it says that God, uh, uh, at least I understand, and possibly you, uh, regarding the number of the Gentiles that uh, God is waiting to bring into his kingdom, and that uh, in, I think, one of the epistles of Paul, it says that the offering of the Gentiles may be acceptable to the Lord. And then I think it goes on to say, um, uh, you know, the deliverer will come. And, and uh, you know, uh, uh, and, uh, yeah, yeah, know. yeah, and, uh, and turn away ungodliness from Jacob, and that all Israel will be saved. All Israel will be saved. So it's very encouraging that uh, uh, all in God's plan, in right. God's mercy, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, we are living in between the times, the time when Christ came and announced the kingdom, but the fullness of it is still uh, ways off. I don't know how long. But uh, in this, between the times, we just continue to try up, you know, uh, to trust in Jesus to give us the faith to remain strong in the, you know, in the, in, and being faithful to him. Correct. Any uh, other? Uh, yes. Pauline, go ahead. Yes, uh, Pastor. Yes, uh, Pastor, what I wanted to uh, know oh, when we... When we have, hello, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, for the uh, to be disciplined, uh, Pastor, uh, we we have some practices like you know, um, meditation, prayer, fellowship, fasting, and things like that. So, um, it uh, is it very close like i hear this term in in the other um, uh, same term in a different way in the roman catholic they call it indulgences so my question to you are these the same because some of the indulgences or let's say discipline as we call it is uh, personally not okay for me let's say like uh, some of it like fasting i i don't personally believe so so how will I know, uh, like, what, what I should do? Again, um, you know, fellowship, yes, I fall in line. So that's what I want to know. I hope my question is uh, clear, Pastor, what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, I, I, I have heard of this term, indulgences, but uh, uh, um, I, I, I am not very sure if that is being used in the same way as spiritual discipline. Uh, I'm not sure. Praveen, do you have any thoughts on that, or Franklin? Uh, how does we how do we understand indulgences from a Catholic perspective? No. <laughs> One and the same is uh, my question because I don't know much of indulgences. It's a little okay. bit, uh, you know, on and off. And uh, I, uh -huh. yeah. Anil, go ahead. So I thought indulgences were like you know you can uh, sort of uh, buy. By redemption, by forgiveness, you know, by donating and so on, and you know, uh, that's how it works. <laughs> or even uh, you know, uh, somebody has more indulgence, you can sort he can pass it on to you for forgiveness okay. and so on. Okay, <laughs> that's how I understood it. I may be wrong. Right. Yeah, I I haven't uh, you know studied this term uh, you know recently, obviously. So. Maybe, Pauline, we can come back to you with uh, a, a more educated answer. Uh, so, uh, but like Anil said, perhaps uh, maybe that is what it means that uh, you can uh, do these things as a barter system to, uh, to be able to get to salvation. Okay, well, um, any other final thoughts? I think we basically have passed the hour, but... Uh, you know, we can take uh, confidence that we have a God who is willing to guide us. And we have seen the various ways he can guide us. And like I said, it's not limited to this. God, uh, you know, can use any medium, any way to bring us uh, uh, his love and his assurance uh, and give us what we need at a particular time in our lives. Right, so I think on that assurance we can uh, uh, we can continue to seek His guidance. Right, uh, so let's shall we then close today, and uh, 
uh, Mano out. May I request you if you can yeah. lead us in a closing prayer? Yes, uh, Anil. Uh, before, no, yeah. Just an, just an aside. I haven't seen Surya Murthy. Is he okay? Anybody knows? Um, I, I re do remember that he had mentioned uh, that he had some kind of a relapse, but later he said he was okay. But I am not sure. Maybe we'll find out about Surya Murthy. Right. And maybe Mano can pray for Suri yeah. ah. Our gracious Father in heaven, we want to thank you for the time that you have given us to spend time in word, meditate, encourage, and learn your word, Lord Master. Thank you for making us and pouring out your light about the guidance of the Holy Spirit, Lord Master. Yes, Lord, you teach us, us in many ways, Lord. You teach us, us directly with your promptings. You teach us, uh, you guide us through your word. You guide us through your servants, Lord Master. We pray that you give us a heart of sensitivity so that we can respond to your voice, Lord Master. We can now allow you to guide our lives, Lord Master, so that our lives are at peace with you, Lord Master. We acknowledge, we fall frequently. We ask for your grace and strength so that we allow your Holy Spirit to equip with your power and overcome this world, Lord Master. We especially like to uphold the Surya Murti. We pray for his well-being, Lord Master. We pray for the good health of his brother, Master. We pray that you give him uh, good strength and health so that he could join and also allow a time so that he can also join the Bible study, Lord Master. Submitting this Bible study into your hands, Lord Master. Let that everything that has been sown in our hearts, Lord Master, bring forth fruit in our lives and be a blessing, Lord Master. Amen. Amen. And thank you very much for joining us. Uh, have a good week ahead and we look forward to seeing you again.